Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Ipsy Free. Uh, we are excited to be together. There's an amazing thing that happens when the people of God come together and celebrate Jesus. And so we're going to do that together today. We're going to stand. We're going to worship. We're going to hear amazing truths today. And we want our hearts to be ready. So would you stand with us as we sing our first song? champion of the world. from 1 Corinthians 15, 57. The 
They're simple and profound, and I want to get them right, so that's why I'm reading them. It says, but thank God he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. I was meeting with a friend yesterday over coffee, and we gave hugs and said, the, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine. And it turned into, Tim was like about ready to like send the police out looking for me because we talked until 6 p.m. <laughs> and it was family, kids, job, um, dynamics that were complex and painful and hurtful. And so when we come in this space we know that maybe some of us are on mountain highs and some of us are down in the valley today. And it's amazing that God has a victory for both, for everyone in the middle, and that he is here to help us face whatever, whatever Goliath is in front of us. And so today, whatever you are facing, be it big, be it small, be it a joy or a sorrow, just hand it over to God today and say, I want to see your victory in this situation. So we're going to sing about that victory right now. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness fails, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. Oh, my God will never fail. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, About transforming, taking up what's. Here we go. <laughs> you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. This is what he does. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. 
Father, we thank you, God, for meeting us, reminding us, Lord, that not only are you capable, but you are faithful. You follow us. You go before us. You are within us, God. Father, remind us that you are Emmanuel. You are with us now. to age, though the earth may pass away, the word remains the same. Your history can prove there's nothing you can't do.
the setting same I will praise your name great is your faithfulness to me great is your faithfulness to me from the rising sun to the setting same I will praise your name great is your faithfulness to me sing it with me morning by morning morning by morning do mercies i see all i have needed Would you join me in a posture and an attitude of, of prayer as we come before God? Lord, your faithfulness is a wonderful reminder of your presence with us and the good that you have for us, Lord. And we so often need to be reminded of that because we are so forgetful, Lord. We're distracted. We're distracted, Lord. I pray that you would continue to work on our hearts and our minds, Lord, to be reminded of the many ways, Lord, that you have um, cared for us and provided for us, Lord. I pray that you would help us to get our hearts off ourselves, Lord, and onto you. Help us to see the, the people around us, Lord, and to speak grace and truth and love toward those around us, Lord. Help us to be reminded of the foreigner, the widow, the orphan, Lord. Because so many times, Lord, we are the foreigner, or we are the widow, or we are the orphan. Lord, I pray um, that you would help us um, to ever be mindful and to follow after you. And Lord, I'm reminded this evening as we gather together to um, pray for the lost, Lord, I pray that you would um, soften our hearts toward those around us as we pray for them, Lord. you for your grace here with us now, Father, and um, as each one of us has come in here, Lord, I pray that you would open our ears and open our minds, Lord, to the word that you would have for us. Thank you for your presence here now with us. In the name of Jesus, we thank you and we pray. Amen. Love God, love all people, and follow Jesus with all of you today. Uh, now is an excellent time to fill out your Connect cards, which you should have been given as you came in. If not, there should be some in the pews in front of you. It's just a great way to uh, let us get to know you, see what's going on. If you have anything you know that you want us to pray for, it's good to let us know down there. And... Uh, we are updating our directory, so if you want to go ahead and fill out that Connect card in full, um, or you can check our weekly email, and you can, should be like a link in there you can follow to submit if you have any updates um, that you want the church directory to know about, or if you're new and you want to, you know, be added to the directory, you can go ahead and do that. Just make sure that you've submitted that by May 7th. 
And on May 13th, we have a Women's Appreciation Luncheon from 12 to 2.30 p.m. Uh, it's going to be at the farm at Trinity Health, and it's going to be a fantastic afternoon for our women. So if you want to join that, there are postcards in the lobby with more information, and you can RSVP in the lobby or by emailing Mary Howard at mary.howard at scouting.org. And also on May 13th, we have a church work day from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. It's going to be a lovely time of being able to get together and serve in fellowship as we take care of our church building and the grounds. Um, there will be coffee and donuts provided as well. So if you want to come serve, you know, join us for that. And 5 p.m. tonight here in the sanctuary, uh, we'll have David King leading a prayer for our lost children, loved ones, and neighbors. So join for that, and you can pray for them, and give them, you know, experience the abundant life in Jesus Christ. And with that, a word from Pastor Steve. Thanks, Brandon. Hey, as you know, we are a people who love God, love all people, and follow Jesus together. And it has come to my attention that, uh, that there's an opportunity for us to expand ourselves into our schools. There are schools that are desiring to have mentors, back to Kids Hope, there you go, uh, mentors in the school. But we, in order to do that on behalf of Ipsy Free and our community to strengthen the families, we need and would desire for somebody to step forward for a Kids Hope director. You'll get training in all of this, and uh, it's, it's a powerful opportunity for us to step into these, uh, these kids' lives and even some of the families uh, that are connected. It's just one mentor, one child for one hour a week. Some of you are familiar with programs that are like this, but I love this program because Jesus is at the core. It's at the center. So when a mentor meets, there's, a, there's the power and presence of Jesus being prayed for through that mentor. So if that's an interest to you, take out that Connect card, the one that uh, Brendan already told you about just a few moments ago. Take it out and uh, put your name and say that you're interested. You want to know more. That's all it takes, and we can have a conversation about uh, what it means to be a Kids Hope director. Kids Hope director. Well, as we move into our time of giving, I want to share a few things uh, that are happening, uh, that happen every year uh, at uh, Somerset Beach Campground, which is uh, a, a few miles west on US-12 that many of us enjoy every summer. Uh, there are kids' camps that happen there. And um, I don't know if you know this, but on the, on the Somerset Beach uh, Campground site, they have a few um, notables. I want to I want to highlight these for you. During an average week, a middle schooler watches 2,121 minutes of television, spends 623 minutes at a computer, and, but only 51 minutes outdoors. Some of us should be just aghast, right? Yeah. Well, we want, to, we want to be a part of the opportunity to help these students, whether they're in middle school or elementary school, to unplug. Uh, another note, uh, nature, one study shows that 65% of parents, probably grandparents and others, are worried that their kids just do not spend enough time outdoors. It's just in front of a screen. Uh, Somerset Beach Campground offers this opportunity for our kids, your grandkids, to unplug. And so we want to encourage you not only to consider sending your kids uh, to camp or grandkids to camp, but also contributing to camp. So as we think about giving, let us not just think about giving only to the, the space that we are inhabiting and the ministries that are here, but also contributing so that our students can apply and get a scholarship to go to camp. Will you pray with me? Father, we're grateful. We're grateful for the good news that that is 
that is expressed at Somerset Beach Campground. And, Father, we want to join with those kids that are going. So, Lord, uh, lean into our hearts as we give today. Lord, as we give not only to the ministries of Ipsy Free, but we also give in order for the ministry, the good news of the gospel that can be expressed in and through the kids at Somerset Beach Campground. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us this opportunity. Amen. Remember, there are three ways you can give online, uh, giving boxes, or by mail. Thank you. Good morning. Could you stand up, please, as we read the gospel? This morning. Stand up. Our gospel will be taken from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 2 from verse 8 to verse 10. I will be reading that in two languages. In the Doma language and then in the English language. The Doma language is my own language, one of the languages in Nigeria, where we are about uh, two to three million people and about 40% of them are Methodist uh, Christians. The Gospel. Alo Dwaka Hini Kelly Gia Bua Gilu or Chelo Chugada About Chugada the Gia Gua Alo Doka Egala B G and Marki Oje Gale B G and Man a man I could not know Jack Ali B G and Man Anuka Hiniko or Chedumalo Lonya E ja flay log if you are Jun Lonya Behaja Legi Bibel Biawa a man a ban out of Jun Lohaja Quenchiaki Ojegalo Bibia Lohang Mawan. That's the end of that. That's in my language, in the English language. John chapter 2, verse 8 to verse 10. Then he said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. When the master of the feast tested the water that had been turned into wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who drew the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom, and he said unto him, Every man serves the good wine first, and after men have drunk, freely, then the poor wine is served. But you have kept the good wine until now. May the Lord bless his word in our hearts as we drink the good wine this morning from the word of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please stay standing. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, I, I wanted to say, I'm glad you're here. Whether you're online or you're in person, it is great to have you here. Just to take these moments to be together and acknowledge God and to thank Him for the freedom we have to worship Him, right? It's this wonderful thing to, to feast on his, the bread of life, the Word of God, and to stand in His presence with the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, right? I just want to welcome you to this holy moment. I'm glad you're here. And the reason I say this is because, unfortunately, some of you won't be here for long. Some of you, are you'll still be here physically, but mentally and emotionally, you'll be somewhere else. Something will get your attention. Something will move you from this time and place. Uh, some of you uh, will actually initiate a text message in the middle of my sermon. You will. Some of you will have to check your phone because you're waiting for a text message from somebody because you're concerned about where you're going to go after this. You're worried about what you're going to eat. You're going to be worried about where you're, if you're going to meet up with those persons. Some of you will be there, right? And, and as you're standing, I just... I just want to, again, reintroduce what was read to you by Mundi. Thank you, Mundi, for reading it in both languages. We do that here when we have the opportunity of somebody having a native tongue because the complexion of the kingdom of God is greater than 
our singular view. It's just greater than that. And so we love to do that. But I want to reintroduce this text to you if I can. It's, it's really quite a, uh, an incredible text. It's incredibly embarrassing to the host. Uh, for Mundi and I, we have something in common, at least uh, that I know of. Some of you may else have the common. But he married a daughter off this year. I will, do, I will marry off a daughter. And the last thing that either one of us would want is to run out of food. Uh, run out of, well, I can't say that I'm going to have wine, but run out of wine, right? We just wouldn't want that to happen. But this is incredibly embarrassing, right? So what happens? Jesus tells his servants, go and get the jars, these massive jars, and to fill them up. These jars were like 20 to 30 gallons of, of water. And he says, then I want you to draw out the water from the, the jars and give it to the master of the banquet. They must have been just wildly freaked by this, right? I mean, we put water in. You want me to give it to the master of the ceremonies? In verse John 2, 8, it says, Then he told them, Now draw out some and take it to the master of the banquet. You can read it. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine, and he did not realize where it had come from, though the servants had drawn the water new. Then they called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after. The guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. The title of today's message is Here and Now. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus, your son, that you would invade our hearts in this moment with your goodness. And just as Jesus lived in an undivided attention in the moment, draw us into your presence and in your calling now to do your will on earth as it was in heaven, as it is in heaven. We pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Again, we are in a series called A Better Way. And what we're looking at is not just the truth of what Jesus said, but the way Jesus lived. Uh, The truth is vitally important for our lives, but the truth was combined to the way he lived, which makes it powerfully impactful. And it has striking qualities about it that we need to focus in on. Today, we're going to focus in on spirituality specifically, and Kathy prayed into it, our distractions or the lack we need to have of them. Jesus himself was fully present. He lived what I called an undivided attention in the moment. He lived fully focused. There are two stories we're going to look at in Dr. Luke's gospel, and they're back-to-back, and it's places where Jesus gives his full attention to the moment he was in. The first one we find is find in Luke's gospel, as I said. Uh, Jesus was walking around in Jericho, and can you imagine, there were large crowds all around. There's a photo of Jericho that I want to show, I think. Uh, yeah, this is, this is Jericho. Uh, this is, this is uh, the, the, the place in which uh, Jesus is walking and walking around. It's this uh, magnificent walled city. And the people have, in this picture that we're going to read, have gathered around him with crowds fighting, wanting, desiring, and hungering for his attention. And he's walking in, and this is what you find in this text from Luke 18. It's a blind beggar named Bartimaeus, and he cries out, Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me. Those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and ordered the man be brought to him. When he came near, Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Lord, I I want to see. As we can tell, the the disciples uh, were a little offended. Jesus doesn't have time for this guy. He's got business to take care of, going somewhere else. Jesus is vitally important to them and to some other things that were happening. He's just way too busy, like us, right? Maybe. Jesus isn't going to stop for some guy begging on the side of the road, and the disciples rebuked the blind beggar and told him to go away. 
But instead, Jesus isn't too busy. He's not too consumed. In fact, he gives this blind beggar his full focus. He says, what would you like me to do for you? What would you like me to do for you? Can you heal me? Can you give me my sight? So miracle one is that Jesus restored this man's sight. But miracle two, if you will, is that he was fully engaged with blind Bartimaeus, who's no longer blind, by the way, fully engaged with him. He had time for this guy, even though his schedule was busy or full. The second story we're going to look at is, is the next story. It's, the con, it's right next to this one, consecutive in row. We see this in Luke 19.1. It mentions, again, Jericho as Jesus entered Jericho. This time it tells us that he was actually going somewhere. He was passing through, and so he was moving through, and there somewhere he had to be. As Jesus entered Jericho, there was a man by the name of Zacchaeus. I mean, he was on his way, right? He was a chief tax collector, and he was wealthy. Now, if you notice, Jesus had already been interrupted one time by a poor blind beggar. Now he's interrupted by a rich, corrupt tax collector. And what I love about this is he, he's got time for the down and out, the margins. He's got time for anyone and a heart for everyone. Doesn't matter where you come from or how bad your baggage is, how dirty or how rich it is, Jesus cares about you. Jesus stops for this guy named Zacchaeus. Now, if you don't know who Zacchaeus was, he was Zacchaeus. Anybody want to sing with me? Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree. Wow, y'all went to Sunday school too. Oh my goodness, that's great. Well, he was a tax collector, which may not mean a whole lot to you in this culture because a tax collector be, can be uh, respectable, although probably, uh, you know, uh, but not at this time. I mean, he was a Jewish tax collector. I mean, a traitor. He was not only on the other sides of on the other side of the track. Some would probably even question whether he was redeemable. But Jesus sees this guy, right? And he doesn't just see him in passing; he sees him in full, and he calls him by name. Zacchaeus and Zacchaeus. Jesus essentially invites himself over for lunch at Zacchaeus' house, right? He's he's already been interrupted once, and he gives. This no good sinner, I'm thinking as a Jewish uh, good sinner, right? <laughs> All right, you got it, <laughs> right? His full attention. And he's talking to Zacchaeus. And he has this moment of interchange as they're eating supper where there's just this full display of repentance, contrition of heart for who he has become and what he has done. He says something like, I've sinned so many times, I've hurt so many people, and I'm so, so sorry. I'll do anything I can do to make it up. And he blurts out, uh, it seems as almost he blurts out anything, but he says, I'll pay back four times to anyone that I stole from. And Jesus looks at him and says, Salvation has come to this home. Salvation has come to this home. Jesus had an undivided attention in the moment, and he stops and gives people one of the greatest gifts he can give, his attention and his love. Jesus was always fully, fully present in the moment. And as we have talked about, and I have even confessed that I'm not always there, but I want to be there that I want to be able to be fully attentive like Jesus is in those moments when I am with people. But even out there in the hall, out in the lobby, I caught myself shaking my hand, shaking somebody's hand and already kind of starting to move on. I want to have this gift that Jesus gives to people. 
I want to be where my feet are. I just want to. I just want to live for the the happy moments and the up moments and the powerful moments and the outwardly meaningful moments. I just want to be able to be present. Maybe you do too in the moments, right? Even in the annoying moments. I don't know. Maybe you weren't a parent like I was, but. Uh, or maybe still am, my kids would have to t- answer to that. But do you remember these moments when your kids were, uh, they, they were doing a painting project or they were doing something and all of a sudden paint went places it wasn't supposed to go? And instead of enjoying the moment that it may be on the walls or on the carpet or even on their body and seeing, you can catch the little bit of the smile there, right? I mean, looking up for approval, instead of like, what a mess. I mean, those words may kind of like dribble out of your mouth, right? I, I, want, to, I want to be better than that. I, I mean, I, I, I used to kind of murmur more often than I should about the, the mess that was just laid, laid out in our home. Whether it be in their rooms, which I know everybody has their own theory about all that. But I've blinked, and they're gone. They're gone. All have graduated from high school. Uh, All are almost graduated from university. That's great. Uh, All three are going to be married very soon, or two of them are married. One's going to be married very soon. It's all in a blink. You know how we started? Statistical odds would say that I've lost some of you already. Harvard did a study, and this is what they found out, and these were their exact words. 47% of the time, people's minds are not in the same place their feet is. Their feet are, excuse me. 47% of the time that you're in conversation with somebody, your mind isn't fully engaged. 47% of the time you're sitting in church or at dinner with your family or engaged with somebody at work or talking to somebody at the gym, you're not fully there. 47% of the time. So one of our our biggest enemies of our our attention, uh, I would argue, in this day and age, is our mobile device, our cell phones. The average cell phone user... We've talked about this historically. We're going to bring it back up. Touches their phone 2,617 times daily. That's the average person. That's the average person. Now, some have calculated that uh, some of us are not so average. We like to exceed averages. So maybe even up to 5,400 times a day, depending on who you are. Can I just tell you, if you... Touch it even the 2,617 times a day. Wash that thing, please. (laughs) Wash that thing, right? Thousands of times of the day, you aren't with whatever, whoever is in front of you. And your mind is somewhere else. If it's not in the phone, sometimes it's just playing games, playing mind games. Uh, My two top games that I play in my mind are the, uh, the win and then game. The win and then game. The win and then. Uh, one day, win, then I'm going to be happy. Right? You might do that. Uh, you know, you know it's, like, it's like when you're a kid, uh, you get to high school as a freshman, and you can't wait until you're graduated. You, you just can't wait. You're ushering the days along. And then as we remind ourselves, we, for so many of us, we then get into college and then we usher ourselves into wanting to be married or in another situation or another state maybe, right? And we just keep moving ourselves along into this place where we've just wished our days away instead of living in the moment. So many of us are doing that, right? We're not living in the moment, the current moment, but we're wishing away the moment we have right in front of us, all the opportunities that may have. So don't miss what you have here and now pursuing what you want later. 
Don't miss what you have here and now, pursuing what you want later. Jesus was fully engaged in these moments that we looked at. It was not a a, a win-then game. And I often play it. It's, It's protecting the future, isn't it, a little bit? What if this happens? You might do that. What if I pass this test? Then what if I don't get a good college? I mean, we all start to play these games depending on where we're at. And then we start to think, wait, wait a second. If I, don't, if I don't get a good job, then I can't afford the orthodontist. Then my kids will have crooked teeth. And if I have crooked teeth, then I've ruined their life. Some of you are laughing. Some of you are not. Jesus said this in Matthew 6, 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Don't borrow from tomorrow. It'll worry, it it takes care of itself. It worries about itself. What I love about Jesus is he wasn't about, he wasn't Uh, anti-planning. He said, I'm not, he, he wasn't telling us not to plan. He just said, don't worry about it. Let it take care of itself. It's really, really important. And I think in these days, so much more, uh, if you will, to be present in the moment to be present in the moment. Sometimes we're just plain distracted, but as, but as I prayed about it, I think there's, there are a couple of reasons why we're not fully present, uh, or at least one main reason, if you will, that scripture points out. If we're followers of Jesus, and it's this, because we lack faith. We're all freaked out about something that happened a long time ago, and I gotta figure out how to, how, figure out how to undo that thing a long time ago. We're freaked out about what's going to happen in the future, and what I discovered is that we need to be fully present in the moment. We need to be able to surrender this moment to God and trust Him for whatever's going to come next. A couple of notes. We need to surrender the past. You can't change. I mean, it's gone. Some of us want to go and tie up bows and Do it all over. You can't. It's gone. And we need to trust God with a future you can't control anyway. He he cares for you, and he will care for you in all of these moments, but it takes faith to engage fully in the moment. I love the way James phrases it. The half-brother of Jesus, James 4, says, come now, you who say tomorrow or today or tomorrow, we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Uh, we, we often, we often want to figure it out. We want to figure out tomorrow before we even get through today. And he asks this question of us, James does, what is your life? And he answers it, much like Proverbs has and Psalmist has, you're a mist that appears for a little while, then vanishes. That's it. You're a mist. Mist. Open your mouth sometime and breathe on the glass. Have you ever done that? Yeah, it's it's there and then it's gone. It's there and it's gone. I don't know how many of you have ever uh, played a game with an hourglass or a timer with an hourglass in it, right? Uh, it, the crazy thing is that we often try to, try to calculate how much time we have in those, but it, it just keeps going. And we don't know how much is in there, but it just keeps mo- going. And it's, it, it's, it, goes, it seems to go faster and faster. But the reality is when we're watching the hourglass, We're not paying attention to the moment we're in. We're not really engaged. The the second thing is no matter, you can't stop the the, the sand from flowing. Time is always passing on. Uh, Steve Miller, uh, I forget the name of the song, but he has that song that we often kind of comes to mind. Time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping. It does. You don't have any control over it. it the, the clock continues to tick. Today is a gift from God, and some of you are, even in this moment, are wishing it away, wondering what is going to happen in three or four hours. Why do I know that? Not because I know you, because I know me. 
Where, where am I going to be? What am I going to be eating? What, you know, am I going to be able to do this thing? Mow the lawn? Is it going to, you know, all of these things, right? We s- begin to worry. But David said in Psalm 118, verse 24, he said this, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We will rejoice and be glad in it. He's saying, today's the day he's given to you. If you're still here, you know what I mean, and I hope you are, I want to tell you, you can't be happy where you're not. You can't be happy where you're not. You can't serve Jesus where you're not, and you can't love people the way Jesus did where you are not. This is the day the Lord has made. The most important moment is here, and it's now. And the most important person is the one right in front of you, whoever that may be. The most important moment is the moment you have right now. I think all of us, myself included, live and kind of project for the big moments, the special moments, the powerful moments. But when I do that, I miss the opportunity to be present in the moment that we have, where Jesus has planted us and wishes for us to bloom in this moment. The most meaningful in and all of this idea of understanding the moments is oftentimes we plan for the big the big conversations, the mountaintop conversations, if you will. Yet I think, though, when we begin to realize what Jesus did and the way he walked and the way he talked and the way he ministered, we realize it's not the big moments that matter. It's actually the smaller ones that actually have, uh, that are, have greater crucial effect. At, at times, even thinking about this, um, you know, I think about my ch- children and how they're leaving. I brought that up now a couple of times. And how they're uh, leaving the nest and they're going to be out. And the question comes to me, how many moments did I miss only thinking about the big moments that were coming? Or the, the big challenges that were ahead for me? I don't want you, I don't want us, to miss what we have now to pursue what we think we want later. This is the day the Lord has made, and it's an opportunity to live the way Jesus lived, to live into his truth, but also to live the way he lived that gives us the fullness, the abundant life that we hunger for, we desire for. When you think about Jesus, if there was a time that he would have been distracted from any others, if there was any time that he would have been distracted from anybody else around him, it would have been his, his time on the cross. But many of you know what I'm talking about. When you think about it, he's, he's the sinless son of God. P- people stripped him down naked, beat him, and he didn't even look human in those, time, in those moments, whipped and flogged, and his back was left open and bleeding, and there he was on the cross. I'm trying to picture, I want you to picture the idea of the pain that he was going through, but he never lost who he was or in the moment, because as he's there, and he's attempting to grab breast by pulling himself up on those nails, he's breathing, and there's a conversation that happens with the, the other thieves on the, on the cross, right? And one of them says, you know, I've, I've done a lot of bad things, <laughs> something along these lines, and I feel real bad about them. And he looks at Jesus and he said, you, with this kind of this thought in his mind, you must be the son of God, right? Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And even in these moments when Jesus was full of pain and easily could have been, uh, you know, easily could have been distracted and everybody would have said, it's completely understandable. In the middle of his worst suffering, he says, fully engaged with the criminal on the cross, it says, today you will be with me in paradise. Fully engaged in the moment. You see, I don't, I don't know who this is for, but you can't serve Jesus where you're not. You can't be happy and fulfilled where you're not. You can't love people where you are not. And if your mind is not where your body is, 40, 47% of the time, you're missing out on the life that God has given you to be a, a great friend, to be a great person. 
But you can't be engaged an engaged mom or dad or grandpa or grandma where you're not. You can't have a great marriage if you're not there, focused fully. God has saved the best days for you here and now. Now is the moment to experience his grace. Now is the moment to experience his love. Now is the moment to experience one another in a greater depth. You can experience his mercy in this moment. You can experience his forgiveness in this moment, right here and now. There is power in this moment because of Jesus. This holy moment, your best days are here and now. If you fully engage with the people that you're with, pouring out your heart in this moment, you will be given the next moment by God. And you will experience it to its fullest for his glory and your, your great delight, I believe. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you so much for your word. Would you bring us, would you bring us, God, into your perfect will in this moment? So you can do exactly what you want to do. As, you're, as each one of you are praying in your mind, let, and maybe you're, you've drifted, just, I encourage you to just bring it back and just surrender it to, to Jesus right now. He, Lord, help us to live as Jesus lived. Help us to love as Jesus loved. Lord, hear our hearts, hear our words that we want to be fully engaged with an undivided attention in the moment for the fullness of your kingdom to come to be displayed through us and in us to enjoy this life that you have given us. God, thank you for working in the lives of so many people. Uh, I believe that There are many of us here, Lord, that are desiring to be fully focused, fully attentive to you and to the moments we have been given, and we have allowed ourselves to drift. So, Lord, would you prompt us over and over again, remind us over and over again to come back to the moment with you, that when I'm with a child, that, Lord, I would give them my fullest attention. When I'm with my spouse, that I would give them my full attention and listen and engage. When I'm with you, Father, in worship, that I would be fully engaged with you and only with you, knowing that you are the one and only one. We want to draw our minds and our hearts to be fully engaged in the moment where the world desires for us to be splintered. The evil one desires for us to be splintered. Lord, Help us to be solely yours. Convict us, empower us, change us to be more like Jesus, to live the way that Jesus lived, to be fully engaged in the moment, to love like Jesus loved. If that's you this morning and you, you find yourself divided often, Just continue to pray, inviting the Holy Spirit to draw your mind and your heart, not only into this moment, but into every moment. But can I I just grab the attention of a few that may be in here this morning? This may be one of the most important moments of your life. It may be just simply one of the most important moments of your life. Can I just ask, how are you doing with God? Some of you say, may say, I'm not even sure I believe in God. And some may say, you know, I, I just know I'm not where I should be. That I need to renew my relationship with the one who loves me with his life. I just want to encourage you to do that today. This is your holy moment. He's a good God who gave his great and holy son so that we could have a relationship with him. If that's you, you can have his forgiveness. You can have his grace. You can have his love. You can follow him into his life.
If that's for you, I want you to pray this prayer this morning. It's on the screen if you need to read it. But you repeat it to the Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, thank you for your mercy, grace, and love found in and through Jesus. Save me and forgive me from my sins. I give you my life and choose to follow, love, and live for you. Amen. Father, I want to thank you for the new and renewed lives this morning. Reminding us that you get our full attention. And when we give you our full attention, Lord, we live lives that are full and abundant, overflowing with your goodness and holiness. We thank you. We thank you for the new life today. Amen. Again, these Connect cards become uh, just a wonderful opportunity for you to communicate your decision this morning. If you have made a decision to follow Jesus or you have renewed your relationship with Jesus, please mark that in your Connect card, whether online or in person, so that we can follow up with you, pray with you, and encourage you in your walk with Jesus. This next song we're about to sing, it talks about this present moment in our lives as the middle. It's not the past, it's not the future, it's the, the here and now. And I was thinking about Psalm 90. Um, it says exactly what my, my mind goes to is, how do I do this? Teach me God to number my days. Um, we, we need God. We need him to help us through this because without him, we're going to be swayed by the culture, by our own whims, by our sinfulness. And we need to remember that we need to be present with God first and foremost. So even now, we're going to ask God to be, to help us to be present with him just as he is fully present with us. So would you stand with us as we sing? the valley. 
great to be together today, to be present with one another, to feel the Lord's presence with us. And we can go today knowing that we can be fully present with him forever, that he never leaves us, never forsakes us. And we can go out and be his ambassadors of love and goodness and hope. So as you go today, take that with you. Don't let your feet and your mind be separated. And when you have that moment, ask the Lord, please make me present. And he will help us through the dividedness that comes. Have a great week. We hope to see you here tonight to pray for the lost.